Following the sad turn of events from lives lost during the nationwide NSAS protest, there were reported lootings of COVID-19 palliatives from various um, warehouses around the country. Of course, this got mixed reactions um, from the people. And if we're being sincere with ourselves, you would agree with me that majority of these looters, based on the footages we have seen, are youths. Now joining us to discuss this behavior, the pros and cons of it all, is the community um, engagement officer at Connected Development Rights, a platform behind um, Follow the Money, an action advocacy-based initiative that tracks and advocates for proper utilization of funds in government and international interventions in grassroots communities, Mopta um, Halilu, and a public affairs analyst who has had several years of experience in the forefront of Nigerian politics, Fatima Uyelami. Hello, Fatima. Hello, Mopta. Hello. Thank you. So let me start with Fatima. I mean, we we we've, before we get into the things stored in the warehouse and how people feel about it. How would you react to um, Nigerian youths actually thinking it is okay to um, loot these um, palliatives from the warehouse? Well, um, thank you. I really do not see the anyone justifying the looting of warehouses or private properties. I've not seen people justify it. Even though some people are saying they are hungry and all of that, but being hungry is not the reason for you to go and loot warehouses. Okay. Saying they are so hungry, I, I is that the rationale to justify it? I don't think there's a rationale behind it. All right, sorry. Um, I, I have to come to you again, Fatima. In as much as we cannot justify this uh, looting and stuff, um, but can we also justify this palliative being kept away from the people? How can we justify that? Because this is a public affair matter, and you're a public affair analyst, so I think you're in the best position to answer that question. See, I, I also do not see reason why any gov anybody, maybe government or private individual, or maybe car COVID or something, could add um, COVID palliatives. Okay, um, let me come to... They are meant to be shared, and it should be done immediately. Uh, not that you keep something in the warehouse and then you expect that maybe when the kids are hungry, or maybe when it's time for your election, or maybe when it's time for your birthday, that's when you want to use it to... I like the birthday part. Um, Mukta, so um, I like that she has mentioned the birthday part. So we've seen um, mm -hmm. various... Um, excuses or reasons as mm. to why these palliatives are still in the warehouse. One of which is, of course, the man saying he was going to share it on his birthday. <laughs> Another is um, that they just received, I think this one is from Lagos State, they just received the, the palliative from Kakovid on 22nd Last of September. And NSAS has also been a reason why they have not been able to share it. Another is coming from Kakovid, and they're saying um, they had to ensure that they got the right um, grains of rice, grains of this, right sugar and everything, and they could not start sharing these palliatives until June. Now, considering the fact that we went on lockdown around April, um, how would you react to this, Mukta? Yeah, first of all, first of all, as government, you must be accountable to people. You must be transparent to the same people you're governing. So if the government have the reason of hiding, or let me say, um, um, what they did with the palliative, the people should be aware of that particular thing. They, should, they, they have a reason behind doing what they did. But what we are saying is, you're not occupying an office that is not public. This is a public office, and you have to make it, you have to run it as, as someone that is occupying a public office. I am not justifying the fact that the people that went to loot the, the properties are doing the right thing. You know, they have almost committed a very big offense. One, they, they did burglary. Two, they, 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 they partake in theft, you know. Three, they, 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 they have caused chaos, you know, riot in the society and what have you. But the point is, the government needs to be transparent and be allowed citizens to hold them accountable so that everybody will know that this is what is happening. Government have received um, a palliative from Kharkovic and they have reason why they are keeping it without putting it out there for 
the beneficiaries to check. Right, so Mukta, um, I, I like I like the angle you came from, um, and I know that uh, follow the money is um, talking about how the, the 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 people in power should be held accountable for whatever monies comes into their accounts. Now, I just I would love to ask you because a lot of people were making excuses um, during the uh, COVID nineteen, the peak of the COVID nineteen say that, oh, Nigeria, we don't have money, we're in debt to this country, we're in debt to that country. There's no way the palliative can get to everyone but the grassroots. But from what I'm seeing, I think I personally could have gotten at least a carton of nudu. It wasn't too much. It's not too much to ask. Do you think that every household could have gotten something if the government had done the right thing? All right. I, I will go from this way. You know, so, uh, as an organization, we have sent the Freedom of Information letter to um, almost all the states in Nigeria requesting the kind of information we need from them, like what did you receive, how do you intend utilizing it. I, I will tell you with full responsibility today that we only got responses from four states, namely Ondo, Kaduna, and Nasarawa, and, and Taraba states. This state did not really explain what and what they have received and how they intend using it. I will not sit down here and tell you that if the government did the right thing, everybody will get. But the point is, if the government did the right thing, everybody that needs palliative, everybody that is meant to get palliative will get palliative. But if you really look at what happened, you know, from the first instance of COVID-19, from the first instance where palliatives are being shared, most states have been giving it to, have been using palliative as a political point where they give their political party members, which is very, very bad and inhuman. This is a pandemic we are facing. So everybody that is meant to get palliative ideally should get that palliative. So what we're saying is, if the government did the right thing, everybody that is meant to get palliative will get it. But we cannot come and say everybody will get the palliative because there are people that are not in need of palliative. People that are in need of palliative are, are there, but there are people that are not in need of palliative. Okay, Fatima, you are a public affairs analyst. Now, looking at the where it suddenly became easy to discover these warehouses. Um, what does that say to you exactly? I didn't hear you. Looking at how it became suddenly easy for regular people to discover these palliatives, what does that say to you? That the government and that our policy hold us. Hmm. Okay, in as much as we agree that they have failed us, don't you think that um, there should be a level of, um, what's it called now, secrecy that comes with such places where you're pulling palliative? In as much as we're talking about transparency, I think what she's trying to say is that the fact that people can easily access it. Do you think that some people that are supposed to protect this thing are also working hand in hand with the people because they also feel like this isn't right? I, I actually feel that some of the people that afford it, they are not in the society. The lower, that's what I'm saying. They are the ones that are not the ones that will tell us we did this there. So somewhere there, let's go there. They are so I, I think that people know this thing. They not try not to do that. Now there's no security on the thing. There's no security anywhere. There's no security. Anywhere. Unfortunately, the reception is quite poor um, at the end of Fatima. But let's just take it back to Mukta. Uh, Mukta, what's the way forward right now since these um, palliatives that were supposed to be um, distributed soon, like the government has said, or some even said that um, they were waiting for the second wave of COVID-19. I don't, I don't know how that is going to happen or if that is something that NCDC has um, predicted. But what's the way forward? All right. First of all, I will say there is a failure from the side of government and there is a failure from the side of citizens. 
you know, that what happened from the looting of uh, COVID-19 funds will show you that there is inadequate security in the country. And this is what we have been saying, that let's have a police reform. Let's have reform in the security sector so that we will have the required manpower to guard and safeguard the, the nation, to, 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 to help the, uh, the government in, in keeping the life of, of people and the property. So first of all, I think the way forward is for us to have enough security with enough equipment to safeguard the life of people and then the properties of government. And for the Sikhism, I think this is 21st century. It's high time for us to understand that looting government properties and looting private individual properties is of no good to us. Because no investor from, from any other part of the world will come and invest in Nigeria. And that is not a failure of government alone. It's a failure from the citizen because we will not have our, our young people employed. If you calculate the number of people that lost their job because of this looting of a thing, you will be surprised with what is happening. I saw what happened in Adamawa State yesterday where young people are looting tractors. You know, where can you take a tractor? How can you hide a tractor? You understand? It's high time for us to understand that we are the leaders of tomorrow. Without the proper and good nature of the country, we can't be leaders. So we have to be good citizens and have active citizens to hold our government accountable in a way that government is meant to be held accountable. And government is it's high time for government to schedule their responsibility of safeguarding the people and protecting life and, and the property of the people. And let, let them allow people to hold them accountable. Let them be transparent. Let them be genuine, legitimate, and, and, and credible in, in their source of doing. I feel that is the way forward in this nation. And on the issue of second wave of COVID-19, I am not a medical doctor. I cannot sit down here and say COVID-19 is gone. But the only thing we could pray for is let's pray and also, you know, um, follow the guidelines of uh, World Health Organization and our home base, um, NCDC, for us to run together and win together. Um, Mukta, um, I hear you, um, but I also want to touch on the parts. I wanted to touch again on the part where you mentioned um, what this is going to impact on us as a society regarding how the international community um, sees us. So it, it's, most times it feels like we are more interested in what happens or how they see us um, beyond how we treat ourselves and how we also hold our own selves accountable. So if we can hold the media and hold our narratives to make it feel like we are doing the right thing, then it seems like we are okay. And even the society we expect to help us achieve this are not happy. They are not getting what they deserve. So um, because you are, we follow the money, I'm going to read this out to you, which is something that was, of course, on the papers, um, which says Kakovi delivers 1.4 billion naira food palliative um, to 107,564 households. Now, doing that mathematics, I mean, what does that say to how accountability is treated in this country and how communication is treated as well? You know, first of all, how can we verify that car COVID actually did that? The information is not there. We in Nigeria are fighting two things. We're fighting fake news and we're fighting the pandemic. But fake news cannot be existing if there is the real news out there. If car COVID is, is implementing that particular thing that they say they're implementing, let them bring the details of everything and make it public for people to hold them accountable. If you really look at what we are saying, there are five things in all these things. There is credibility, legitimacy, accountability, service before power. We must be held accountable. We must, we must, we must be credible before we be legitimate. And we must be legitimate before we be held accountable. We must be held accountable before we provide service. And we must provide service before we have power. So what we are saying is that COVID should make the, the news or whatever they, they did available to the public so that the public will help the people that 
CACOVID provides that service to accountable. But the information is not in the public domain. How do you expect us to verify? So what we're saying now here is the CACOVID did not make it uh, publicly available for everybody to know that this, what they did, is, is accurate. And on your other question of, you know, we've been um, talking about how we want the international world to see us. The thing is, we can, government is to make a level playing ground for business to thrive so that our young people will be employed and other people will now enjoy the dividends of democracy. So without investors coming to our country, we will not see that development because government cannot employ everybody. So that is what we are saying. So let's hold ourselves accountable and make it a level playing ground for other investors to come and invest in our country so that our youth can be leaders of tomorrow that we are being told ever since when we are in primary school. And that is what we are saying. So we are saying the information should be made public. This question will be going to the both of you now because um, I'm more concerned about the people who actually need this palliative and the people that actually need help. It's never too late to give help. If, it, if it's on your birthday that you decided that or that you, you, that you said, okay, I'm going to share the palliative, at least a mouth would have been fed. Now, how do you think that this whole looting will affect the grassroots? Do you think that this would give them an excuse for them to say that, ah, they've taken everything and then now there would not be any accountability because I believe that we can still account for the rest that we are. <laughs> Some people, right. sorry, excuse first, me, yeah. Yeah, first of all, I, I, I will say there is no justification <laughs> for looting at in whatever cost. And it is, it is ridiculous for someone to come out to say something that is meant for public, he is keeping it for his birthday. That is really, <laughs> really in, in, inappropriate. Mm. But the point is, the people that went to lose, you will see someone packing something that he cannot even finish it. Mm. He will end up going to the market mm. to sell it. The mm. people that are in need of the palliative will end up not getting it. Because one person has packed maybe seven or eight cartons of noodles, you know, a one bag of or 11 bags of rice, what have you. So the people that are meant to get it are hungry. That ca They cannot even go there. They don't have the strength to go there and take it. So what we're saying, if there are remaining ones, the government should stand up and act upon that. You know, share it to the people that are in need. And I will advise the government should make a proper way of having a security to arrest the people that loot so that the, 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 the looting cannot continue. Thank you so much, Mukta and Fatima, for joining us on Tea Time.